Hi everyone, how are you doing? Today I am uh, uh, honored to be with Tamara and Tamara is uh, from Holland um, even though the name is Russian but she's not Russian and uh, she's from Holland. So Tamara, who are you? Well, that, that, that's kind of a big question. Eh? Who am I? I, I can think I... Uh, you have two minutes. There are about ten, t ten answers to that question. Two minutes. But, so uh, Two minutes, so who I am? Well, I would describe myself as a writer, speaker, photographer, artist, creative and business strategist from the Netherlands, half Romanian, half Dutch, and yeah, what else? One of the things that I love to do in life is to help people get closer to who they are and to spark a bit of joy and excitement to follow what it is that they love to do in life. Um, yeah, it's kind of a big question, like, who are you? <laughs> you still have one more minute. I still got one more minute. You're testing me and challenging my boundaries here to see what else I can come up with. Who am I? Yes. Mm. <laughs> mm. I'm just a human, just like you and everybody else on this planet. They're all equal. Okay, so let me try to introduce you. Um, hi yes. everyone, today we are with Tamara and Tamara is from Holland and she is a uh, interesting traveler, artist, uh, a coach who helps people find themselves and uh, she is a very intuitive person. She tries to tune in to herself and the universe and you to try to see if she can help you find yourself. And uh, today I would love to hear about uh, her travels to Pakistan. I was very excited to uh, learn that she has been to Pakistan two times, not even one time, two times. You know, people come here and they're like, ah, don't go there, you will be killed. And I wanted to know all the story. How did you end up in Pakistan? Because nobody uh, wants to come to Pakistan. So why did you come to Pakistan? Are you an agent or something? Um, it's quite an interesting story. I, uh, it started in the Netherlands, actually. I was at a, at, a, at a coaching course, and during the lunch break, I was sitting uh, opposite of this very intelligent, incredible Pakistani uh, woman. So we were just discussing some of the assignments, and she told me that she wanted to change the educational system of Pakistan as a woman, so we joked a bit about it, and uh, was that Malala she became Yusufzai my friend. or somebody else? What did you say? Was that Malala or somebody else? No, it wasn't Malala, it was somebody else. Okay. And uh, so, every single time I met her, we, I was jokingly questioning her every single time. So, and when, uh, when are you going to change this educational system of Pakistan? So about one year later, we became quite close friends, and we were sitting in London at a train station, and she said, oh, maybe the next time I see you would be at my wedding in Pakistan. Would you come, if that is correct? So... About four months later, I was in Pakistan at her wedding, and uh, so I got invited to the wedding together with six other international friends of her, and I decided to come. And like you said, it's very interesting, because in the two weeks before I went, before I got on the plane, um, there were, I think, five terrorist attacks and bombings all around the Islamabad area, and I was flying to Islamabad. And interestingly enough, my intuition always said, like, everything is okay. It's safe. Just just go. And as soon as a Western woman, when you're telling people, like, yeah, I'm going to go to Pakistan to a wedding. They were so excited. Everybody got like, uh-huh, yeah, have fun. But secretly somewhere in their minds, they're either questioning it or saying goodbye to you. And I was like, there's so many people, these Pakistanis travel to Pakistan and back, so if they can do it, why can't I do it? Like, everybody comes back and forth, everybody's still alive, so I'll wind up still alive, too. And uh, it was a really, really beautiful experience. I stayed three weeks, actually not in Islamabad, but in Rawalpindi, for the wedding. So I spent three weeks inside of the home of the family. Um, and uh, I remember flying from London to Muscat and from Muscat to Islamabad. And when I got on the plane, I was the only Western person in the plane, and it was mostly full of Arabic uh, people, mostly Arabic men. So I was squeezed in a row between three or four other Arabic uh, persons. 
And I was wondering at that moment, like, how am I going to behave? Because I had absolutely no clue what it is that I was going to walk into, except for the stories that are being told in the West. Uh, but it's basically everything that's being told through different channels isn't true. It's just an interpretation of what is there. You never know what is the truth for the situation unless you actually get to the place. So I got out of the plane, got through customs, and it was one or two days before there was the, the, the national military parade. So the whole Islamabad airport was blocked with military and police. And I was standing there and I thought, I've got a few choices. And just before I walked outside of that gate, I decided, like, I let go of the notion to know what's going to happen. I let go of the notion that I'm the same. I let go of the notion that I'm different. I, I just let go of it and just be myself. Who else can I be than just me? And I just go there. So I walked out and, of course, I got the proper Pakistani um, welcome of, everybody waiting at this airport like a couple of hundred people and my friend was standing at the side so i walked to her and she went to me she just gave me a hug grabbed my suitcase said hi and started running so i'm like okay i just run so we run through the airport everybody looking at us because of course i was suddenly like this weird person inside of this group of people an unfamiliar face so we ran outside and her father was parked on the opposite of the street and people were starting to come up to us and she looked at me and she said Welcome to Pakistan. Now run. And she started running over the road with my suitcase. And I was just running with my other suitcase behind it. So we, we climb over the fence in the middle, ran to her father, put a suitcase in the car. And she gave me a high five and she said, yes, we did it. And that was my, my first encounter into, into Pakistan. It was quite hilarious. And uh, it was amazing, actually, that... It, it took a bit of adjustment, of course, because the world is so new. Um, and I guess I, I messed up a couple of times in the home of the family and I had a, a few crying moments, not understanding how this works. Or please don't walk over the carpet here and how to keep everything clean, right? It's the, the standard Pakistani custom. But after a couple of days, I got it. And uh, everybody really cared for me and for all the other people. And it's a very, very beautiful experience to... Um, also experience a wedding from the inside out instead from the outside in. So that was my uh, my first encounter with uh, with Pakistan. What did your mother think when you were going to Pakistan? Uh, my mother is quite, quite of a rebel. She's she's from Romania. So I have Romanian, half Dutch. So she and in the times that she, my father went to Romania as a bit of a Dutch rebel in the 1970s. So she married a, a, let's say, as a Romanian woman, a Dutch hippie man, and then moved out of the communist system and that she needed to put in a lot of effort to kind of like, it took months and months and months to be able to get out of the country because of the uh, political system at that moment. So she kind of knew that at the moment I would, I said to my mom, mom, I'm going to a wedding in, in Pakistan. She said, okay, have fun, see you when you get back. <laughs> there was nothing going on. On that side, so I'm very blessed to have a family that is quite liberal when it comes to traveling and uh, and meeting people and have no judgments on uh, on the world. I guess maybe that is where I got my traveling spirit from. Interesting. And um, so, how did you ended up get going back and coming back again? Yes, it's like after these three weeks in Rawalpindi in Islamabad and. Uh, Three weeks, wow. Three weeks. It was three weeks, full-on experience. And uh, one of the funny things was that one of the, uh, the sisters of uh, the uncle of the household called every single day, two times a day, to ask what I was eating. And uncle was always laughing. Of course, this, what is the foreigner eating? What does she eat? And every, every day uncle told her, like, she eats the same thing as we do. So it was quite funny to see how this culture starts mixing, right? And there... The same as that I have no notion about how it worked in Pakistan, similar way, if you never experienced something on the outside, people get curious. And so there were a lot of questions and a, a lot of looks, but always in a very friendly manner. I never felt, uh, felt unsafe, even though at one moment I went with two other people of the uh, wedding, two foreigners, a Chinese girl and an Icelandic uh, guy. Uh, we took a trip to uh, to Lahore for three or four days. 
So with three foreigners on their own in Lahore. So of course, there's, there's quite a lot of attention, but people are always simply curious. And, and that's about it. So I always experience quite open uh, experience. But then I don't know what the universe brings me, right? Do I simply follow what's been given to me and I judge what comes to me. So about, I think that was not this year, but last year, March. So somewhere last November, I'm at another conference and I'm uh, meeting another man who's part of the group. And he turns out to be Pakistani, so I start smiling. So it's not interesting. Where do these Pakistani people come from in my surroundings? So I tell him about the wedding, about my friends. And uh, like two months later, he says, like, I'm organizing an uh, event about women's empowerment and a conference at uh, Lums in Lahore. Do you want to come and speak? I was like, yeah, I want to come. This is cool. I, I really enjoyed my time in Pakistan. There was something unexplainably familiar with Pakistan, even though I... I have completely different habits and I'm not aware consciously of the cultural conditioning, right? They're just habits and things that I, I don't know because I'm not from there. But it feels familiar. Maybe it's a bit of my Eastern uh, Eastern influence from my mother's side of Romania, but we're, there's still quite a distance between Romania and, and Pakistan. So uh, I said, yes, it, it just simply felt familiar. And uh, so I spent another week in uh, in Lahore, mostly at Lums. And uh, but Lums, of course, is just one small part of uh, of Lahore. So I I tried to sneak out almost every day <laughs> and to see how far I could get into uh, general life and the diversity of people and the different places and the culture uh, that much. And from there, I met more people and. Uh, I guess it's the universe and the Facebook algorithm that then afterwards started expanding my uh, my network. So simply uh, things that align started started coming started coming towards. Uh, If uh, you were to list down the differences between the two cultures, what would you list down as three major differences you saw? multiple to speak individualism so how people interact with each other is quite differently here um, so that is one thing that I really noticed uh, not just because I'm a foreigner coming into the place but also the people on under on the, uh, on the, in between each other
difference is in there. So if somebody was to make you the Prime Minister of Pakistan, what are the three things you would do? Oh my gosh! Is that a question I can answer? Um... Tamara, is, it's impossible for you yeah. to be out of words. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm feeling into it. I'm not out of words, but I'm, I'm, I'm feeling into it. Let, let me, give me a moment to see what, what my genuine and honest response to this would be. Um, but literally, the first thing when you say this, what comes up to me is that this is a role I would never take upon within my own uh, space. Um, not because it's an unimportant role. But for me, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't answer the question from the perspective of being the Prime Minister of, of Pakistan. I find it a, quite a, a dangerous position to answer that question from. Um, okay, let me, in, let me no, change it. But what, what, I would, what I would wish for, for people within Pakistan, for all over the world, but also for within Pakistan, and one of the observations that I made is to realize that the right to speak and the right to show up as yourself is a freedom that comes from within yourself and is by default not dependent on either an educational or a political or religious system or framework. Whatever framework is being set there, the frameworks are everywhere in the world. And it's very easy to believe because that is how we're conditioned that because of those circumstances and because of where we're at or having no access to financial means or no access to education and a lot of rules and systems applied upon society <clears throat> that that would imply that we have no authority over our own minds and over our own things and that we have no authority to speak and for me that starts with simply feeling into ourselves like what is it that I like to do? Like, what what brings me joy? Simply in your direct environment. Because we don't always all have to be famous. So when it comes from, and that might link back a little bit to a political system, not so much me put, putting me in the seat of the prime minister, that I've written an article by request of some of my friends. And it started as a co-writing uh, article with a journalist in Pakistan and it ended up me publishing an article by myself which, where I thought like, do I really want to do this? Do I want to art- publish an article about democracy uh, as an outsider? And I did. And I truly believe that we can change ship- systems by adding beauty to what to the current state instead of focusing on resisting a system. So that freedom of who we are and the freedom to learn and understand what democracy is comes from in, from the inside out by owning who we are and owning our own voices. And then there's, like, this isn't a continuous conversation, but to touch it very small and briefly, what comes to me, then this is what it is. So if the Prime Minister of Pakistan calls you and <laughs> says... Okay, Tamara, you've spent a month, you have lived your life in different parts of the world. Tell me what are the three things we should do to empower the people of Pakistan. Tell me and I'll do it. Your wish is my da da da. The knowledge to create communication platforms because knowledge is there. Yet the one thing I perceive sometimes lacking is the platform. Now the platform can also always be created, yet it needs to be done from the inside out, not from the outside in. Um, of course, human equality. More education on differences between men and women. Uh, what it means to be a woman what it means to be a man, and how to coexist equally. That's a problem that consists worldwide. 
and um, what else? I give it two right now. Again? I said I gave two answers now, right? Instead of uh, the third one. Of three, third one. Yeah, it would be authentic self-expression. To be able to be able to dance, to sing, to dance, to sing, to paint, to speak, to perform, to tell stories, and the ability to to truthfully dare to communicate what it is that is inside of you without fear of your family or society um, getting into trouble. Ta-da! Okay, what Ta-da! if, what if you were the, <laughs> what if you were, what if you were the president of uh, Holland and Norway and uh, Netherlands, what would you do three things? Oh gosh, what do I do? All these political questions I had. Um, what do I do? Interestingly enough, I'm not that involved within this country when it comes to that. Um, I don't know how to answer this question actually, in all honesty. Okay, pass. Awesome. Alrighty, <laughs> so everyone, you saw Tamara Ruber, and uh, you should follow her on Facebook, uh, inbox you her your questions. She's not supposed to answer you unless she feels like it, and uh, you're you're paying her for that, or she feels like she wants to answer them. So um, go for it, add, add her, and interview her, and connect with her, and see how she can help you empower your life. Thank you so much. Thank you, Tamara, for being with us. Thank you, Ryan, for having me.